We're starting in Corvallis at HP because the company just got awarded $50 million in Federal CHIPS Act money. It's for semiconductor manufacturing. Many of Oregon's top political leaders were here congratulating each other. You'll hear from them. But we'll also hear from a company leader about the interesting path that HP has taken from its founding to printers to laptops to today. First, the money. $50 million in the semiconductor world is not an enormous amount, but it's not nothing. And it did generate a lot of enthusiasm at HP today. $50 million, that's not bad. Those are our taxpayer dollars being brought back here to do work for Oregonians. We now have 50 million pieces of evidence that Washington, D.C. knows where Corvallis is. $50 million. Chips and Science Act. That is amazing. Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley spread around the congratulations. Uh, Senator Wyden and I and in our congressional delegation, we were absolutely cheering on the Chips and Science Act. And a huge kudo to the governor and the state legislators for leading the Oregon Chips and Science Act that's a complement to what's happening at the national level. Well done. So you can see lots of excitement there, and congrats to HP. The company says one specific impact will be hiring about 100 more people, although that may not happen for another 12 months or more. Among the folks attending, you saw Governor Tina Kotek there. She complimented HP workers and the company, and she is rightfully proud of the Oregon CHIPS Act, which she helped push through the legislature. HP is getting an additional $10 million from that program, which set aside as much as $240 million to help Oregon companies expand and then apply for that big time federal money as well. Because it's not enough to pass a law, and I would say some other states aren't even passing laws, it's not enough to say we have money. We have to be able to say, okay, we're here to work with you. What do you need? Let's get your application in the work. Let's move your money. You needed to know, companies like HP needed to know that there was money on the table from the state while they were pursuing help at the federal level. Because we can't do the things we need to do in our state and across the country without that kind of public leadership, private sector partnership. By the way, that backdrop that they're standing in front of is meant to represent the garage where HP was founded way back in 1939. On a different wall in the same room, there were displays of the technology from HP going back through the decades. They are an interesting contrast to one of the areas this company is now exploring, something called microfluidics. HP did not have any video that we could use to explain what that means, but thankfully, Boston University does, and you're looking at it. They are, they too are exploring the ways that very small amounts of fluids can be moved through various devices. As Boston University explains it, it's almost like a circuit board, but it uses fluids instead of electricity, super tiny. Tuan Tron from HP says it is an exciting part of the future. We're into drug dispensing, we're into single cell kind of drug interaction for research cancer. We're into 3D printing and uh, other future things we won't talk about today, but some very, very interesting things happening in our labs. We look forward to learning about that. All right, so you still with me? The federal government awarded HP $50 million today to help expand its research and manufacturing, especially its work with microfluidics. One of the people it, at the presentation is the Undersecretary of Commerce. Her name is Lori Lacasio. I'm telling you about her because she manages the federal chips team for the Biden administration, but she's also a biotech scientist and an inventor herself with 12 patents. And she is very much into microfluidics. Um, on a personal note, a lot of people have already noted that microfluidics is a core part of my life's work and my research. And at the end of the day, I'm just an inventor at heart. And I have to say, you put me in front of this garage and I want to go in and tinker. <laughs> this is awesome to be here. I know firsthand the innovations that um, like microfluidics offers um, applied to the life sciences can be game changing, leading to new tools for drug discovery and single cell analysis for advanced diagnostics. These can really bring breakthroughs to the healthcare industry. Now, many of you folks like me think about printers or computers when we think about HP. So. When I got a chance after today's main event to talk with their people about this medical side of things, I asked how it connects to their core mission. 
I'm thinking of HP and laptops and printers and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, and now it sounds like almost you're going into medical research. Is yeah, that kind of a curve for you guys? Well, if you think about the fundamental technology, so if you think about printers, it's basically the ability to, to actually drive you know, fluids and deliver fluids at, very, at picoliter scale. And so that has applications in many other spaces. And so for us, we absolutely are in drug research interaction, single cell dispense today. And for us, we're looking for opportunities across semiconductor to get into different areas with that technology. So yeah, we're a technology company at the end of the day. We happen to have products in PC and print, but really our, our core foundation is a technology company. We find opportunities and solve the world's problem through technology. And, that, and you know, when I took my tour here, it was one of the things that really, I, it was a wow factor. You think about the changes in medicine and people come up with these great ideas, but you need the technology to actually implement it and to see some of the work that's coming on the microfluidics has real life application. So it's gonna make things better for a lot of folks and we're doing it here in Oregon. Super interesting, and I gotta say, I'd never heard of it till today. Just for context, by the way, that 50 million that HP is getting, it is a lot of money, but it's scraps compared to what Intel got. Intel got $8.5 billion in grant money and an additional 11 billion in loans. That's for projects in several states, including here at home. So, what do you think about this new federal chips money coming to Oregon? Keep it coming and further expand our silicon forest, or do you have concerns about it? Email us and let us know your thoughts, will you? The address is thestory at kgw.com, or call and leave a voicemail. The number is 503-226-5090.